hi guys hi welcome welcome back to my channel uh once again we are going straight into the video and today we're going to be learning a little bit of swahili so this is a class welcome to my class and i hope that you enjoy and learn and have fun so guys today we're going to be doing something very interesting as always so we are going to be learning uh names in swahili of uh, domestic animals domestic animals are animals that are kept at home so if you came to a kenyan or african home these are some of the animals that you will find moving about or being kept for whatever reason for example a cow for milk a sheep for for mutton or sometimes meat uh uh for example um goats for meat sometimes most of the times for some communities for milk uh, you will find camel for milk, for meat, you know, so all those things. So we're going to be discussing domestic animals here and their names in Swahili. So the first domestic animal that we have here is the camel. The picture is here. I hope that you know what that is. A camel in Kiswahili is a uh, ngamia. Ngamia. Three syllables. And uh, yeah, that is how you pronounce that word. Nga me uh. so the second word that we have is uh the cow the cow in swahili is called ngombe ngombe yeah i know the first syllable is tricky for some people to pronounce but that is how you say it so you can just practice every once in a while and uh, you know like the name lupita nyongo yeah something like that so if you can pronounce that then you definitely can pronounce ngombe two syllables yeah so ngombe is cow in kiswahili and then um, we have dog dog is a domestic animal kept in kenya in africa and i think in most parts of the world for security for pets yeah so a dog in kiswahili is called mboa yeah Mbua. We don't have specifications whether it's a, a German Shepherd, with, whether it's a canine, whatever type of dog that it is. It's called Mbua, yeah, in Swahili. So, and then we have a rooster. A rooster in Kiswahili is called Jogo. Jogo, three syllables. And, uh, yeah, in Kenya we have a street, uh, a road called Jogo Road. <laughs> Yeah, those that know know what I mean. But yeah, so rooster is called jogo. We have chicken that is called kuku in Kiswahili. Kuku. So these ones are like the ones. Even a rooster is called kuku. But now uh, for just specification, uh, kuku could more likely mean uh, the one that lays the female one. So yeah, something like that. That. so for rooster maybe for specification call it jogo for the one that lays eggs call it kuku and uh, people will understand you so we have rabbit rabbit is uh in swahili sungura sungura three syllables yeah it's also kept uh, at home for meat some keep it for pets especially boys you know like boys who are just like growing up they like to keep that for pets sorry about the noise that's going on out there and then we have uh okay this one i it's not an animal that is uh, kept at home at least not in in kenya i wouldn't say africa because i'm not sure about other countries but here in kenya we don't keep rats for, the, for 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 food or anything so they're just rodents yeah so uh, rats in swahili they are called panya panya they're rodents so you'll find them spoiling stuff you know eating things they're not supposed to be eating uh just destruction basically so and then we have the guinea fall the guinea fall in swahili is called kanga and uh, I hope you can see the picture that I've just displayed. So guinea fowl, kanga, and then we have duck. The duck is called bata in Kiswahili. And then we have the turkey. So duck and turkey, they're usually like almost related. 
So the duck is butter and then the turkey is butter mzinga. Butter mzinga. Turkey is this one. So um, that about the turkey. And then we have the goat. The goat is called mbuzi. We have done goat, sheep and cow a lot in this channel so far. I hope that you can remember that on your own. So the goat is called mbuzi. The sheep is called kondo. Kondo. Yeah, three syllables again. Mbuzi has two syllables. Um, donkey. Donkey is called punda in Kiswahili. And then uh, this animal that is not kept at home but it's related to punda is uh, the zebra. Zebra, as you may have noticed, zebra looks pretty much like the donkey. So in Kiswahili, the zebra is called uh, uh the the zebra is called uh punda milia so it's punda but it has another specification punda milia to to like talks about the 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 black and lines uh, the black and white stripes of the of the zebra yeah so that is besides the point because we're talking about domestic animals and then we also have uh i have talked about donkey punda and then we have horse. The horse is called Farasi. Yeah, the horse is called Farasi. And uh, uh, in Kenya, it's pretty much uh, kept for not meat. Not meat for the much I know, but um, you never know. But yeah, I think for the most part, not for meat. It's kept for pets. Some have them as pets. Uh, some people have uh, them for sports, like uh, there's a place called uh, the Ngong Race Course in Kenya where people just go for riding the horse. So, yeah, so that. <laughs> this is weird. Um, we also have the pig that we have also talked about much in this channel. So the pig is called Nguruwe. Uh, we've talked about pig most of the time when we're talking about pork. You people, when you come to Kenya and you want to eat pork, so you'll just say you want nguruwe. And then we have bees. Bees, they are kept in Kenya for honey. And so there are people who keep bees as domestic animals. And uh, I think that is, uh, it's quite something. So yeah, bees are called nuki. New key, two syllables. New key. I hope you got that. And then we have um, the dove. The dove is called njiwa. Njiwa. I know you people are finding these uh, words uh, hard to pronounce, maybe or something. But you know what? With time, you get to know how to combine these letters. Uh, especially the ones that have like three letters as one syllable. For example, K-H-A. Uh, you, you just get to learn to pronounce H, to pronounce G, G-H-A, to pronounce uh, D-H-A, the, uh, things like those, N-G-A, N-G-A. You, you just get to learn to pronounce them with time. So yeah, no worries. You will get here. That's why I'm here. So I'll make sure you get that. So uh, we also have parrot. A parrot, the bird, it's called... Um, the parrot is called kasuku. Yeah, the one that makes a lot of noise chirping. It's called kasuku in Kiswahili. And uh, it's not very common though, but it's there. And then we have fish. The people who keep fish at home in a small pond... So fish is called samaki. Fish is called what? Samaki. And then the very last one that could be very controversial that people didn't expect, I would say, is uh, the grasshopper. So there are people in, uh, especially Uganda, I've seen this in Uganda quite a lot. So there are people who keep grasshoppers for food. They eat the, the thing as just food 
I don't know how they prepare it, but they do. I think one of these days when I visit Uganda, I'll do for you a video showing how they they do the farming. They have uh, iron sheets that look like these. They're shaped in such a way. I don't know how to explain these guys. But when you go to, when you check your YouTube after this video, you might find it interesting to check um, videos about grasshopper keeping and you will find what I'm talking about. The, the the shape of the iron sheets and then the way they, I, I i don't know what happens there but there's some way that they collect them and then after that they sell them in kampala especially when you go to kampala town there are so many it's like a very common thing there so you will find them and then uh, you can uh, if you are adventurous you might want to test uh, what they feel like yeah the grasshoppers I have eaten a grasshopper myself some time back, way, way back. I was very young. I cannot exactly remember the taste, but I have. So uh, the taste is kind of like just insecty, like, you know, if you've eaten any insects. Or let me say, like, um, it tastes like crabs. Yeah. You see crabs? Yeah, it tastes like crabs. So yeah i think guys i will stop there for now i have uh, had fun i hope that you have learned something from this video uh this is a uh, part should be part four or part five so i'm going to be doing another video just right now um to do another part of uh the swahili learning lesson and then um uh, we will keep going and keep going and uh, as time goes guys i'm sure you will start writing sentences you will start writing sentences in swahili and pronouncing them correctly so thank you so much for always uh, purposing to be here for being in my class being in my other videos about africa traditions cultures you know yeah so i hope to see you in my next video <laughs> you have to be a good student don't be a truant make sure that you see the the previous video and then make sure you also see the video after this and another and another so that by the time uh we are on lesson like uh 15 you should have grasped quite a lot so i want by lesson 15 you guys can uh, actually articulate a swahili sentence that will be a plus for me as the teacher and uh yeah, I hope that you enjoyed the lessons. Bye.